This is part of a high school algebra one lesson regarding forms of the line. We've just talked about in the other videos the different forms of the line, the most common ones. And here, let's remind ourselves how each one is done and how they're used. So let's start here with a summary and uh, make sure that you're understanding all of this. Okay. Standard form of the line is the oldest that I'm aware of, the most commonly used in the past. Um, before there was a calculator, and I am old enough that I did all of this without a calculator, it's just easier. And now that there are many times in which you're not going to be allowed to use a calculator, you're going to need to demonstrate that you know various things. This is generally the quickest way to get to many of the places that you need to be. So make sure that you are aware it, aware of it. Again, how to recognize standard form. Big thing is that C is isolated. C is the constant term. It's just a number. It doesn't have a variable with it. Here C represents the constants, which are all combined together into one number. A and B are the coefficients of X and Y, which makes it a line. Um, in the best practice, A, B, and C are all integers. It just makes it useful. And A is positive. Now, all, all mathematicians don't say A has to be positive, but it doesn't hurt if it is. And there are many circumstances when it's easier to use if it is positive. So I'd like for you all, at least at this point, to make A positive as well. Okay, there's one preferred equation in standard. You'll recall that you can have many equivalent equations. For example, if you'd have um, uh, 5x minus 2y equals 10, an equivalent equation might be 20x minus 8y equals 40. That's just the first one multiplied by 40. Both of these are in standard form, but this one is preferred because the common factor 4 has been removed. A, rec a reminder of the ease of graphing. Um, when graphing with intercepts, if you don't have a calculator, it's just pretty much the easiest way to do it, I think. But anyway, so if it's in standard form, remember that the y-intercept is when x is 0. So I'll use the preferred one here. If I want to find the y-intercept, I make x 0. And 0 it times whatever the coefficient is, is still going to be 0. So I can cover it up, pretend it's not there, and then do it in my head. 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. So the y-intercept is, what did I say, negative 5. Okay? The x-intercept, remember to find the x-intercept, um, y is 0. If y is 0, it doesn't matter what the coefficient is because the whole thing is going to be 0 because it's multiplied. So cover it up and say 10 divided by 5 is 2. So the x-intercept would be at 2. And you take and draw yourself a nice little line there. And you have a good graphic representation of what the equation looks like. That's some of the benefits of standard form of the line. As we go on in algebra, there'll be a lot more times in which we use standard form. Hopefully you'll be able to master it by then. Okay, slope intercept form is now the preferred form. Um, truthfully, when I started teaching algebra, I had not done algebra with a graphing calculator ever. And I think Mr. Thomas, my algebra teacher, taught me this, but I don't remember it. I remember standard and I remember point-slope form. Because slope-intercept is really just a special case of point-slope form in which the point that you're using is the y-intercept. It's arranged a little bit differently for convenience, but all it is is a special case of this. So it really 
uh, it was not anything that I ever found that useful because it's just in one of these and you just use the point slope form. However, since graphing calculators use almost exclusively functions, this is the function form where the dependent variable equals is isolated and that is in this case y. So y is isolated, that's how you recognize that it's slope intercept form which is also function form. A convenient thing also about slope intercept form is there's only one correct way to write it. Uh, y must be isolated and all other like terms must be combined and simplified. So y must be completely isolated, it can't be negative. Being negative means it, it's included with isolating it. So slope intercept form, characteristic of seeing, it is seeing that the y is isolated. Okay. And uh, it's really handy because it's the one that the calculator uses. It even has the button to do with the y equals. Okay. So it's cool. Yeah. Okay. Y equals. And it automatically does it if I had turned it on. Okay. Point slope form uh, It's going to be really useful in things of shapes, doing with circles and other shapes. You're going to need to be familiar with this form. And at this point in your education, so for the future, you definitely didn't know how to do it. But for this point, if you're given some points, it's the easiest way to get into uh, either one of the standard or the slope intercept form is to start with point slope form. So, um, again, there are many correct ways. Any point on the line, in this case designated as a specific point, x sub 1, y sub 1, any point on the line will make a different looking equation, and they're all valid, and they're all in point slope form. So there are an infinite number of correct equations in point slope form, but they all wind down to the same thing and they're all graphed exactly the same thing. Again, it's a handy entry point, and um, I know we tend these days to think of slope-intercept as being primary, but really it's just a special case of this. So the way I learned it, if you know these two, you know it, but we're going to be using slope-intercept form a lot because we are going to be using calculators. Okay, so that's what we have there. And now you're going to please um, acquire, if you have not already acquired, a couple of these sheets. Uh, you either got them in the classroom or you're going to download it off the, web, off the internet and print it and put it And Please cut it so it'll fit in. Don't fold it over and fill it all out. So I'd like for you to do that and it will be counted when I check your cipher in another week or so. Go back and rehearse and write down this about each one of the standard of the forms. How do you dis what is the standard form? How do you distinguish it? And what do the variables mean? Write that for each and then practice just another couple of times here changing between forms. So take these, take the two of them, Paste them in, preferably right across from each other so you can see what you're doing because you're going to need to be able to see what you're doing. So at the next available place in the notes section of your cipher, place these in, summarize each of the forms, and work a few problems. And then, well, uh, I have a couple of summaries that'll be available for download. Here's one of them. And here's the other. That may help you put things together all being on one page. Again, for your cipher, you're required to write everything down in your own hand. But you may, if you like these, print them and put them in there to paste them in. Uh, remember, you're required to do it with your own hand because that assists you in learning it. I do like having a beautiful cipher, but I even more want you to have a beautiful mathematical mind. Okay, so here truly endeth the lesson on points of the line. Uh, excuse me, forms of the line.